How do you make a new season of a beloved show? How do you follow up a New York Times bestseller? And how do you make the sequel to a massively popular video game? Do you try something totally different? Give the fans what they've been clamoring for? Return to form? Or some combination of all of it? Well, the answer really is different for every series, and that's because we're not looking deep enough. What's the driving force behind every great creation? A human being, or multiple people. And that thing you love was created in their minds before being brought to life for you to enjoy. It's not about the final product we received. It's about the creator. This is a very relevant topic in just about every form of media, but today we're gonna mainly focus on video games because that's what I have the most experience discussing. More specifically, we're going to talk about how it applies to Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Mario. In 2017, Nintendo and Sega faced a huge dilemma, making the next big game for their mascot, and they implemented a very similar solution, but the results could not have been more juxtaposed. In the case of one series, we got debatably the best entry ever that's been praised to death since launch. And in the case of the other series, we got one of the most lackluster and stale installments ever. Both companies gave the fans what they wanted, or what they thought they wanted, and it's abundantly clear that that's not always the best thing for a series. But let's take a closer look at both cases so we can better analyze the topic at large. After the critically acclaimed Sonic Generations, fans were finally confident in the Sonic series again and many saw it as the official grand sayonara to the then-dubbed Dark Age of Sonic. But the game to follow it up was anything but reassuring. Fans were disappointed, to say the least, that they didn't get more levels featuring the polished and straight-up incredible Generations gameplay. I personally think Lost World is a pretty enjoyable game for what it is, story aside, but most of the fanbase, and a majority of critics, didn't have the nicest things to say about it. No one thinks it's downright terrible, but the word mediocre? mediocre is used when just about anybody talks about it, and I can certainly see why. So Sonic Team took that criticism to heart, and rather than experimenting with and expanding upon this new idea, they looked to the success of Generations and tried to simply do it again. <laughs> this game's terrible. I haven't even beat it if I'm being totally honest. I just got so bored with the gameplay and I wasn't invested in the story, so I dropped it. It was an endless cycle of disappointment. I'd see a classic Sonic stage and just press through it to play something else, then I'd get to the custom character and have a bit more fun, but not much, and when I'd finally get to the modern Sonic I was looking forward to, the stage would be a straight line that lasted under two minutes. When I caught onto that vicious cycle, I realized the game really had nothing else to provide, so I quit. It really was not a pleasant experience, and we can't really blame Sonic Team or Sega, because we asked for it. It seems like they really learned from their past mistakes, and we didn't. After the catastrophic failure of Sonic the Hedgehog, 2006 of course, the franchise really hit rock bottom, and it didn't look like a bright future for the Blue Blur at all. It tarnished its reputation forever, and could have very well killed the entire franchise, so it definitely taught Sega some valuable lessons. Maybe holding onto the same gameplay style for too long would make fans grow weary of it, or leave the devs with no innovative ideas to push the series forward. For 06 specifically, I think the biggest reason for its failure was the controversial story and the horrible glitchiness of everything, and they did a lot to prevent that in future games. Every Sonic game since has taken its time with development, which I'm cool with, you know, give projects their proper time in the oven, but like, five years? Come on, that's a bit much. And the stories themselves have become much more safe. Besides Unleashed, which was fairly ambitious, none of these games give the characters any depth, their personalities are as flat and generic as can be, and the premises themselves have almost no stakes. They no longer take the time to develop things, or truly tell a story. And that's coming from someone who's typically indifferent to storytelling in games. These more recent cutscenes are actively painful to watch. Dialogue is so forced, and there's not an entertaining aspect about any of it. I'm glad they took to heart the low polish of 06, because a lot of studios like to release half-finished games, and it's good that Sonic Team's an exception now, but I really wish they'd be more experimental with their stories, man. I do have some hope for Frontiers, there's definitely some interesting elements at play, but if it's another Colors or Lost World, I'm gonna have to skip every cutscene. That's beside the point, though. They most relevantly learned that gameplay styles could grow stale, so when they saw that beginning to happen as their ideas ran dry post-generations, they shifted gears. And hey, Lost World has a lot going for it being a new gameplay style. And had they expanded on it, I think we could have got some really good stuff out of it. 
but they didn't stick with their gut and instead chose to give the fanbase what they wanted. There's a problem with that, and it's not because the things we beg for are always bad ideas. It can actually be quite the contrary, and in some cases, they're just what a series needs. Let's take, for example, another game that came out in 2017, Super Mario Odyssey. Mario's transition to 3D changed the fundamentals of his gameplay. A once linear 2D platforming series became open world in 3D. Each stage had multiple objectives and a huge focus on exploration, which was pretty drastically different from his 2D roots. As console limitations became less, well, limiting, they started to slowly bring Mario's 3D games back to his linear upbringing. It started with Galaxy, and by 3D land slash world, stages even ended with a flagpole and exploration was pretty much non-existent. I think both types of 3D Marios have their own pros and cons, but the fanbase as a whole wanted to see a return to that 64 and Sunshine gameplay, and Odyssey did exactly that. Worlds were now wildly expansive and full of things to do, and it was awesome. The game received praise from just about everyone who played it, and for good reason. It's one of the best games to come out in the last few years, and it's one of the plumber's best, which really says something. It did more of what the fans wanted, but with a twist. They implemented this entirely new mechanic with Cappy, and it really made the game special. You now had so many more options to get from point A to point B. You could hit things from far away, gain more distance on your jumps, and obviously possess different enemies and objects, which brought with it countless fresh and innovative challenges. I love everything they did with Cappy, and while I was initially resistant to the idea, they executed it so well and it's a huge part of why I love this game so much. Without it, the game would lose a ton of its identity, and if developers are going to bring back and build on old gameplay styles, I think some kind of new mechanic, character, item, or story element is a necessity. It unlocks so much more potential for this old way of playing a game. The original release most likely contained all the ideas the developers had the most faith in. So if people want more of that, shake something up to spark new ideas. That little change is the difference between this and this. It's so vital because it gave them more to play around with, and it presented new opportunities and potential for fun that wasn't there previously. Odyssey gave the fans what they wanted, but it brought something fresh with it to truly give that old concept new life. So wait, listening to the fans is good in some cases, but it's also bad in others? Is there even a correlation between that and the quality of a game? Well, not really, no. And that's because we're looking at this entire concept with a limited scope. Forces doesn't work because it hardly tried anything new. Both Classic and Modern Sonic play the exact same as they did previously, but with more straightforward and uninspired stages. The custom character is the most well-received aspect of the game, and it just so happens to be the only new idea. But its mediocrity doesn't do enough to carry the otherwise bad game. Odyssey's the game's antithesis. Cappy gave the devs the chance to look at an old framework from a completely new perspective, and it made the final product undoubtedly more interesting. So if such a small creative freedom unlocks that much potential, can you imagine the effect that having no restraints has on creativity? It's through the roof. Fans typically want more of something they've gotten previously. That's why they're fans. Something that License did had to have piqued their interest at one point, and that's what they'll want more of. But rather than listening to that, I think creatives need to block that out to some extent and work on the things they're truly passionate about, regardless of the current fans. One of my favorite games from Sonic Team isn't even a Sonic one. It's Nights into Dreams for the Sega Saturn. Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima felt a Sonic burnout, so they took a break from their typical limitations and made one of the most weird and fun games ever. I looked at it more in depth in a separate video, but my point is, we get better products when the people behind them actually want to make them. Or at least, have the ideas necessary to do so. We might say we want more of this or that, but if that creative well is dry, you're not gonna get that. You're gonna get a lifeless shell of it that you won't end up liking. And for good reason. Let the talented, professional game developers do what they do best. Let them make the experience of their dreams and use their imagination to its fullest potential. Remember, they can't take away a game you love. It'll always be there for you to play and have fun with. So be open to new ideas, and hey, if they aren't your thing, that's fine. Odds are it'll be someone else's, and the higher quality of the product overall will probably result in higher sales and more growth for that series you support. What you want out of something isn't anybody else's problem, and the creatives behind these games, and all media, owe you nothing. They made something that really resonated with you and brought you joy, so why the hell do they need to give you more? That's why I hate the term, they owe it to the fans. No, 
You as an enjoyer of something don't get to dictate the direction in which it goes. Stop being so damn entitled, and be grateful that you had such a positive experience. Making a fanbase happy is important, but everyone loves something for a different reason, and you can't please everyone. Let them do what they love, and if that's not your style, let it go. It's all about the desire to make something. If the passion's there, it'll show, and consumers will get a better product than they would have otherwise. This applies to all creatives. I'm not saying I'm even comparable to a game studio, but I can certainly relate to the feeling of burnout. When you don't feel like making something, it's not going to come out well. Even the greatest of ideas will fail without the proper love put into their execution. So as fans of something, we shouldn't get what we want. We should get what the creators want to make. That's why I'm so excited for Sonic Frontiers. It seems like they're making the game they envisioned, and not the one we asked for. This is coming from a guy who learned his lesson. I was one of those people who wanted Sonic Forces. I saw that trailer when I was like 12 years old, and I kid you not, shed an actual tear when I saw classic Sonic show up on screen. I can't tell you how embarrassed I am to admit that, but it's 100% true. I thought it was a sign of getting Generations 2. I mean, they even said it was made by the same people as that game and Colors. They weren't lying, but looking back on it, it was such obvious bait and I hate myself for falling for it. But yeah, that game's finally behind us, and Frontiers is near and I can't wait to play it. So thank you very much for watching, and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you later.